Okay, it is 6 p.m. Monday, January 7th, 2013. This is Dr. Otto turning the facilities agenda and meeting over to Mr. Potts. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, in, in presence is uh, Ms. Torsha, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Otto, obviously, and uh, Ms. Monica Hamill. So uh, Mr. Wolf will be a few minutes late. Uh, on the agenda this morning, or this morning, this <laughs> evening, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Oh. p.m. Uh, we're going to be covering several items on the agenda. Uh, we have the demand response for 2012, uh, also Act 129, uh, and then we're going into some high school uh, kitchen equipment uh, and some pricing for natural gas. And uh, obviously, the main topic this evening will be elementary uh, curtailment in, the, in a building. Uh, well, first, we'll start with item one, which is demand response. Uh, and Mr. Smith, would you like to uh, yeah. take that over on that? Yeah, this year for our demand response, um, we earned $31,809 this year on demand response. Um, you can look what our projected is down on the bottom there for next year. Um, our projected is $54,000 next year. With the multiplier, is that pretty much a guarantee, or? Yeah, if we shut down all power. You know. We did that once, didn't we? Oh, we've been doing this for years. But I mean, it actually hit us once this summer, where we. Yeah, had, yeah. For the first time, yeah, so it's been a minor. Time. Do they give you a time, a, test, a timeline? Actual, when the, yeah, when they, they give shut you down an hour. An hour. It was a minor inconvenience. It really, yeah, you don't even notice it. Oh, I'm, so. I'm sorry. Man. That's all right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they give you an hour, and it's, you know. Did you get the email of my report? I'm sorry? You got the email of the building report, right? Yes. Yeah, I have a little bit. Yeah. So that's the demand response. Our Act 129, um, we submitted everything. It's at the state right now and Med Ed. Um, we put in for 16. I expect us to make around $12,000. That's above and beyond the demand response, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. So all, all in, you'll have about forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars. Yeah, close to Do it. Do we designate both of these to go into cap reserve? That goes into cap reserve. Yeah. The high school kitchen steamer. Um, we've been fighting this thing in this steamer. It's fourteen years old. Um, it needs replaced. I have a maintenance work order here from Sharon Templin. That's the original then, right? Yeah, it's the original. Um, it's, it's getting to a safety hazard right now. Um, we just can't control the steam in it. We've done everything. Um, you know, it's a safety issue now. People are getting burned. The chief cook in the high school got second-degree burns on her arm from it and everything like that because we can't control it. Is this the one we talked about a few months ago? Yeah. That was around 32000 Yeah, right now i got a price from Clark here, basically the identical piece of equipment, which we can use some parts off the one, you know, we're going to replace. Um, it comes out to $34,671.50. So this also comes out of the Enterprise Fund, correct? This comes out of the cafeteria fund. Which also makes it even less likely that we're going to have the money anytime soon for that annex kitchen plan. This is exactly why we need this kind of money. We also have a steamer that's gone down in Birdsburg. That's been there since 1987, but I'm not going to do nothing with that until we decide if we're going to close the building down or not. Because if we close the building down, we can move. we're going to move a lot of that equipment over into the other cafeterias for right now. And just for, for reference in the cafeteria fund, what is our total right now? I have no idea. That's a running total. We can That's a that. running total. That goes, I, I, I would say just off the top of my head, there's sixty to $70,000 in that right now. But remember, that's that's always, that's like a checking account. Right. It goes up and down depending on. Has there any large items going out to pay out of that fund? No. Nah. This is the largest. So I bring it down minimal. Yeah. Like Gary said, it fluctuates. 
Okay. Uh, item four we have on the agenda, uh, natural gas. I guess this is obviously for pricing. Yeah, the there's, a sheet, there's a sheet in the back. Um, through the IU, the consortium, all the Berks County schools go together. And um, there's our price that we got for natural gas from July 13 to June 14. Um, Fifty percent of it's locked in right now. They haven't locked in the rest of the price. They're waiting until it comes down a little lower. And um, we got a really good price on that, which we should, which we talked about earlier. You know. How was that compared to last year? Um, it's a little bit cheaper than last year. Uh, there again, we were talking about natural gas. So, yep. yeah, absolutely. I mean, natural gas is is going to stay stable for a while. I think in Pennsylvania, at least. Just a couple other things. I don't have any agenda. Um, we have a Ford Astro van that um, we're going to have to scrap. So we have another vehicle that we're going to be down. The frames rotted out in it. Gene won't inspect it anymore, and I'm not going to spend no time welding plates on it or anything like that. It's a 92 Astro van, so we're just going to take it and um, scrap it. What was that used for? Maintenance. Oh, just the maintenance van. Okay. 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 Nothing else on the facilities, Ken? No. Short just, and sweet? Just, um, <clears throat> we got one thing. These guys work on the Anmars up there? A little. Depending a little. On, depending on internal? Yeah. Well, we um, we um, crapped out a motor on one of the three-cylinder Yanmars. So um, I can rebuild it. I just don't have the book for the time the injector pump up to the... Oh, I can get you that. Can you get me that? Get you some numbers on it? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Okay, and uh, the main. I just got to turn the injector pump up with the gears up front. Yeah, that's mine. You just can't flop that on. No. I just need a book on it. No, that'd be, that's easy. Uh, okay, and uh, the, the main topic tonight that should take up most of the evening, obviously, will be uh, looking into uh, elementary school closing facility, and obviously, this is regarding APC. Well, um, let me jump in here. Last year, around this time, exactly about 10 months ago, um, we came back to this committee after a request had been made with uh, declining enrollment to see what the feasibility of closing a building was. We hadn't really designated any building in particular. And at that point, we had felt, and if you still have a copy of that report, um, we were close to a tipping point, but it really wasn't feasible at that point yet with the enrollment that we had to close the building, even though we did have some empty space. We just didn't feel like there was a way we could consolidate that space in a way that made sense. Um, so obviously with the budget where it is and also with the fact that we were already at the tipping point, we did say that we would come back and revisit it. We did revisit it, and I'd like to thank Ken and, and Mary Beth for, for helping me with um, drawing the, the information together that you have in the report that I forwarded to you. So... Um, at the end of the day, I'll go to the end and then we'll come back and talk about it piece by piece. We do believe now that it is possible to um, close a building, and we think the most logical choice for the reasons that I've uh, summarized in this report, that APC would be the building um, to uh, designate to be closed, and I believe that we could do so uh, effective for the 2013 I do have a typographical in there. I, when you see that, I just noticed that I have 2104. I have a little dyslexia there. So it should be 2014 on that, that first paragraph, second paragraph. But at any rate, it doesn't change the, the gist of the conversation. Um, we do believe that, um, based on the information that I've given you, that we can do, and we can do it at a significant cost reduction. And that's a significant cost reduction that I believe barring some strange um, influx of, of students that we don't anticipate, that this is something that can uh, remain in place for many years to come. Um, just to summarize and, and talk to the points that I have here, since I, I put that out on the table, I, I came up with the seven criteria that you see there that I felt would be important for us to, to discuss, because anytime you're taking a facility 
uh, especially as, as one that's been around as long as, as the Amity Primary Center, you're probably going to get some questions. So um, the first thing that we wanted to do was make sure we minimized any program curtailment, meaning if we closed the building, what would we lose? So we, wanted, we looked at that criteria, too. The second would be any time you want to get a large crowd to come out to a meeting, talk about the word redistricting in, in, in elementaries where you have to change where kids went. We've avoided that completely with this plan. Nobody has to go anywhere other than where they had always been going. Number three, um, minimize any new costs to the district. Sometimes you talk about would this increase or would this go down. Basically, the only cost that I, I think we were a little bit leery of, and we've already um, made sure that that's not a problem, and that's transportation would increase, and that we have found already that the transportation cost would be a wash. Um, that the building would incur significant cost savings. So if we were going to shut the building down and we were going to wind up with a financial wash or saving, I don't know, 20000 30000 40000 it, it really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to do so. But as you can see from the plan, when we get into that part of it, we're talking close to a half a million dollars here annually. So when you take that out annually, that's, that's very, very significant. Um, obviously, we have to comply with all federal, state, and local legal requirements. And there are things that you have to do in order to shut a building down. Sixth criteria that it would leave all the elementary attendance areas of the district equal, which means Amity, Monocacy, and Birdsboro, if we were to go with this plan, would all still offer the very same. That's something we've always wanted to do. And finally, that this would negate the need to build a new elementary. We believe that barring any increase in enrollment, we're probably solid for a decade. And I was just doing some math in my head. We, we pay about $7 million a year in, in debt service. Over a decade, we're going to save $70 million. The potential of buying down our debt here in this district, which is, I don't it's over 100, is it 90,000, 90 million, I think? 94. Mm -hmm. 94 million. So in the space of a decade, which you think is a long time, but it really isn't, in 10 years' time, we could, without having to build, I, I think this, unless we would say, again, I can sit here now and say this, and then suddenly, you know, we all look back five years from now and go, wow, the population exploded from 3,800 to 5,200. I don't, I just don't see that happening. But the population growth just in the country is flat. So unless people are going to be coming in here or Union Township or parts of Amity Township open up to growth, I, I just, I don't see us. We could even see a little bit of growth, and at which point we could always go back and we could reopen and recommission APC if we, in fact, decide to close it down. So with all of those criteria, all of the arrows and all of pointing in what I would say the right direction, um, we believe this would be a good move for the district. But um, we certainly would obviously like feedback from you guys as a committee and ultimately from the board. Um, the actual plan, if I can talk about that, uh, I gave you five handouts. One was just what I consider to be some general frequently asked questions that might be asked. There could be more to that list. Two, the floor plans for AIC, APC, and MEC that would reflect that reflect our current usage and then the proposed new usage, which I'm going to have Mrs. Torsha talk to because she's actually the only one in the last five years that's lived in both of those buildings. So she can actually speak to the exact running of those buildings day in and day out. Um, I put together some enrollment data, and I just want you to know the figures that you see there. I try to use one figure, and there's a, there's a thing called our third day enrollment, which is the figure we have to report to the state, so it creates consistency. You might see those numbers fluctuate from a beginning to an end of a school year, but you're comparing apples to apples with these numbers. That's how many kids we have every third day of those school years listed. We call it the three-day enrollment report. That's what Pennsylvania uses to count student enrollment. Um, and then I gave you a potential staff slash cost reduction projection chart. And then the last handout is the same one I gave you last year because you were all in the committee last year of the legal issues that are involved with closing a building. So with, with that preface, um, I don't know how you want to approach this. The, the actual structure of what we're contemplating is to make, if this were to become official, APC would close. And the Amity area, I'll call it for lack of a better term, the Amity attendance area, which also includes parts of the Monocacy area, all those kindergarten kids would go to Monocacy. 
and that's not unprecedented. If you remember when we closed APC down for the renovation back in 2009, 2010, all the kids went to Monocacy anyway. So um, the only negative to that from a program standpoint is the bus ride will, will become a little longer for some of the kindergarten kids who are probably out at, at that woods edge area that, that is on the corner of Warman Road and 562. Um, beyond that, most of the rides will be a little longer, but we, we don't believe they'll be prohibitive because we've already done them. So we've already been through a trial run of this process. The reason that we wouldn't put the kindergarten kids over at AIC is it was never really engineered to have the kindergarten kids in, in that um, one of the perk, nice perks that we have for our kindergarten kids throughout the district is that they all have in-house bathrooms. AIC does not really have that. So in order to keep it consistent across the district and not cause a major upheaval, all of the kids in kindergarten would have an in-house bathroom. Um, so AIC would, would house first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and the other two sites would then become K full K-5s as we have them now. If there would be an uptick, we could always kind of retrofit, and Kenny, correct me if I'm wrong, we could put the kindergarten kids in AIC. It's our choice at this time not to do that, primarily because we have a brand new facility in Monocacy and the space is there as well. So what this plan does is if you look at the final numbers, it balances out, uh, I believe, we wind up with about 625, 650. Uh, I can look at the numbers. I'm just reciting here now. At AIC, MEC winds up with close to 500, and Birdsboro becomes our, quote, smallest building in the mid-400s. So that creates more balance on all three sites than we have now. Um, I, I think for some of the negative connotations that closing a building might have, I really can't find a more positive time to close a school building based on the on, on the, the, the problems that we're facing with our budget and for the foreseeable future. So that's my, my, my talking points. Certainly would like your feedback, and we can walk you through each of the, maybe Mrs. Torsha, while they're processing everything we just said, you want to, if you guys want to take a look at the floor plans. I said I wouldn't do this unless you could show me point by point where everybody's going to go so that there's not some kind of mayhem come day one next year. So we've got everybody in a space, and actually I don't even think AIC is at capacity. One of the things that we didn't want to do by putting kindergarten kids at AIC, we would have sent the capacity up near 700. We didn't want 700 kids in one building. We just felt like that would be kind of squeezing them in. But some of the horror stories that you hear when buildings consolidate is, well, art on a cart, you know, you hear that. That's a bad thing. You can't have everybody, you know, the art teacher roams around on a cart. We're going to be able to maintain all the art rooms all the music rooms, all of the same programs that we currently have. That's what I mean when we say we wanted to make sure we didn't have any program curtailment. This has almost zero effect on program. I mean, I, I correct no, me, no I, I can't think of anything that we've affected programmatically with the prospect of shutting down this building. Other than you're losing, I mean, I would even say, you know what, you worry about losing a neighborhood school, which was one of the things that said, well, why not Birdsboro? And I think, you know what? Then I got. Then you've got a major redistricting. All of those kids in Birdsboro is one of our highly more densely populated areas in the district. Parents will actually be happier because you would have. I mean, that would have created mayhem to close Birdsboro for kindergarten, for first and second grade. And Kenny and I talked today from a facility standpoint. Not that APC is not a good building, because obviously you're going to get the question. Well, we just invested nine million dollars in that building. There's there's just going to be no way around that. We did, and at the time that was what we did. But Birdsboro is also, we, we figured, is good for another 20 to 25 years with all the upgrades that's been made there. So I think we're giving the, the district a very, very firm facilities future, especially at the elementary level. Um, I, I think for most of us, we'll probably be off the board and going somewhere and, and doing something else. And these, this plan will still be in place if, if everyone agrees that it's a good plan and what decides to do it. You could shoot the plan down and just we would just have a lot. I get news for you. We'd have a lot of empty space in, in Monocacy. There's even empty space in Monocacy that we believe was easy to fill with, with this. So um, I'll open it up. I don't know if you want to look at these or what questions you have, but the, I the did, time is the, yours. Well, the, the time I look today uh, at this probably more now than ever, uh, I like to commend the administration. This is, I mean, everything, any question you could possibly have is here. Well, there might be others, but we tried to, uh, we tried to anticipate. Well, I mean, I think you're going to have, you know, obviously the, the culture shock of Johnny going from 
APC possibly to monocopy, whatever that that would that would cause what grief. Uh, but obviously, with with AIC, we're looking at 426 at present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to take it to 649. And the capacity of that building is rated, what, Kenny, 750. So, so we're still under. Okay, so how, that doesn't term. I know some of the kids, uh, when you get to that larger capacity, it seems to have the time for lunch seems to be really lagging. Uh, and, and let you speak to that. Uh, you'll still be able to support having first and second grade um, eating together. You would not have to separate them out. You could double them up, actually. The, the cafeteria is that large. So we haven't been fully utilizing it. And if we go... It's a big if, building. Yeah, if we do a mm -hmm. shift, a 15-minute a, a, a rotation through, it, it will probably support it even better. Um, I've, While being principal there, I always had just a straight half hour um, lunch and then the next group came in 10 minutes later so there's there's really a lot of time to be able to um, make that really a non-issue I just want to uh, one I, thing I'm, oh, I'm sorry I want to clarify that when you look at that number because this is just a numbers question if you look at the AIC chart and you go back to my first year here there were 688 kids in that building right I and had, we made it work. Right. I had so this is not this isn't new to us. We can do this. Yeah, I had I had over seven hundred kids my first year when the fifth grade had nine sections. And this isn't I, even I a strain on us. Been, well. what, the first year to eight, eight, nine. Yes. I know for us it sounds so kind of odd, really but there are a lot of elementary schools with six hundred and fifty kids. So it was it really was a non issue. I mean a county wide. For not just here in Dana Boom. And, and the reason I don't want to talk about those two years because there was so much happening where we were moving kids, the whole APC population was divided up into. So just look when you look at the enrollment figures, start with 2010 and use that as your cutoff point. Look at the the, the high enrollment in 2010-11 was 1774. We're almost 200 less now. That's significant. What's the class size? going to be for AP. It's, it'll be, it'll the same, be the same it's be been. The same as what That's what I mean programmatically. This stayed. isn't going to, we're not pumping up class sizes to make this work. I think we were shooting for 25 per classroom to, in right. order to close the class um, within that building anyway. So we would have six uh, sections of first, I'm, I'm sorry, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. First grade would have only four sections because of the numbers of kindergarten coming to first grade are that low. And so the trend is going to be getting lower each year, because um, we'll then we'll go to four second grades, four third grades, and we'll be losing two classes in each grade. Are we increasing the size from what they presently are? Are they 23? A, a little bit, maybe about nothing that's three going or to have a programmatic impact. Class. I mean, if we were coming back to you and telling you we were going to start putting 28, 29 kids yeah. in, then you should go. Whoa, it whoa, won't whoa, affect the, the. But we're not first doing and that. Second right? grade group and our third, fourth, fifth grade numbers were going to go up. I know we were trying to target 25. So right. That's, yeah. And that's what we're still shooting. This doesn't impact special ed. This doesn't yeah. impact specials. This that we are going to move one special ed class in this plan. But my, my suggestion was that we're right but that's now legal. housing autistic support students within our program on the Amity campus that are Monocacy kids. Mm -hmm. And with that staff, we, we wouldn't need that program in addition to the autistic support that we have for three through five. And that the numbers are not so large to where we would need two teachers. So we would, and I've spoken to Shelly about my special education um, suggestions, and she was in agreement. So that may make the families in Monocacy a little bit happier that their, you know, autistic children would be traveling. As far as letting, uh, I guess, uh, we have to go out to public for the the legal requirements for a building closure, i.e., taking it out of educational programming. Even though we keep it, we still have to go through this. You have to hold a public hearing, and you have to announce three months in advance to give people time. I, I would suggest that if we're going to do this, that we announce it ASAP, probably next Monday, if you guys as a committee agree with it, mm -hmm. and then post three months from today or that date a hearing. And Brian Supers told me there's a specific agenda that has to be put together. People have allowed to have time to comment. I would suggest that we would go on the offensive and create some own, our own open houses, maybe once a month, and let people come out, and we could show up, let people come and, and, and ask questions. That way, by the time you get to your vote, the drama's over, if there's going to be any drama. I'm, I'm just anticipating that there may be some outcry. I don't 
I don't know how much. There's no way of ever anticipating that. I can tell you if we were going to stay, how many kids are now going over to Birdsboro, you'd have a crowd. But we're not saying that. We're, we're, we're keeping our attendance areas, our neighborhoods, everybody's going to remain intact. Um, I, I, I think the only criticism we're going to face will probably be some questions about, you know, why didn't you plan better eight, seven, eight years ago? And I'm, I, I don't have answers for that. I wasn't here. And I don't want to throw anybody else under the bus that was here because that's just things, decisions get made. Uh, you can point the fingers all you want to. You've got to go on from now. Right. You know what I, mean? I think we're, we're trying to make it right. Uh, this is the right thing to do. I'm yes. convinced about that. Whether it's going to be popular or not is another question. I think it's the right thing to do. You're going to say something like that. Well, I was looking at the, the figure that we should be saving, or the estimating savings is four four $469,000. Mm -hmm. Will this kind of secure that our kindergarten will stay intact by getting rid of this, by getting rid of the building? And then this money they That's a board decision. Before. You have the right. See, what would happen is if you accept this, and, 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 and I, I'm pretty sure we can make this number work mm -hmm. within at least 95%. It might fluctuate a couple dollars here and there depending on what might happen. And you may want to weigh in on that and say, you know what, we really don't want to lose that administrator because of the, of the still really having the same amount of kids as we had the year before. There may be some things, just know that anything that you would pull out of this equation makes this number go down. Mm -hmm. There's really not much to make it go up. I think that's at a high watermark. So if you would want to say this would save kindergarten, that's a board decision. Mm -hmm. You could just say this is more money towards solving the entire debt. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to say at this point that obviously it's about the same dollar figure. Right, that's and, and I think that would be a, a, a conversation that the board would want to have. Mm -hmm. I would certainly say, all I'm saying is I think our recommendation is unequivocally to close that building. And, and that 469 is, is a, I'm going to say, a starting point. I would say close it if it was 250. Yeah. Well, you're going to be looking possibly if we can move, move out of here. Well, that's that's another part of the plan. Well, we didn't get to right, that yet. Right. Yeah, that, that, that was one of the You're, questions I had. Yeah, if I you, if you immediately move over, you don't have to spend at 85 to renovate the high school. That's correct. Plan. Correct. Right. And even, what, when's at least we have one more year. The way I the way I thirtieth of twenty four. The way I would see it yeah. is that the best financial plan would be for us to occupy that building as soon as this lease is done. Boom, we go. We save the eighty five thousand that you just talked about at the high school. And we begin to also, for that next budget year, not have to budget $100,000 for this building. But is this the, uh, the lease? Is that utilities as an addition to the lease? The lease is about 86, and our estimate is anywhere from 10 to 15 for utilities. 10 to 15 for utilities. So I guess my question is, there's going to be some amount of utilities still spent at the... Correct. The so it's like, Why would, okay. is there a good reason not to move and there's this forty-five thousand dollars right there. That's what the building um, basically vacant until we move over there. It is cheaper to leave it shut down totally. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Well, right. see, but, but the other thing that we talked about, and again, we've got to run some. We've got to run some things. I don't want to shut the community. I don't want to shut it down to the community groups that use it. The gym. The gym, mm -hmm. even though we don't really gain a lot of money from them, I don't think that's fair to them. Uh, and we all are, we all we also are going to aggressively pursue leasing part of that building, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking for five thousand dollars a month. Well, maybe it would be. I don't know. I don't even want to quote a figure. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. But for some significant amount of money, more than what we're getting from the the Y daycare program right now, to help defray whatever, not even defray, to help put some revenue in our talk about revenue enhancement. We should put that one as a topic. Mm -hmm. So, Candace, in your building? opinion, if if, uh, well, I don't want to if, fill it. We want to use it. The lease well, just, we would just move over to ABC. <clears throat> All right, we'd still be paying for the lease space, but we wouldn't be paying utilities because there would be none here. Would That's it, correct. That would be a correct would assumption. Would it still not be worth it to move anyway? And we've talked. We've been talking about that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> and you always have the thing we're paying eighty-six thousand dollars here for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know. You're paying a little I, more I, than that over there. I know. Right. right. You know, six right. one and a half thousand or the other. Oh, I would bring that up with the whole board. I spoke about it. Yeah. You know. We could also, maybe we can work out a deal with our, our contract here and, and see what they'll be able to do for us. Maybe they would be willing at some point to 
let us out half a year. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say that publicly because that puts them on the spot. Well, your, your operational cost at 45000 could you do a transition move where you start bringing people Well, we over talked there? about that, too. Well, first, first of all, I mean, just like all the moving we're going to do this summer, um, I don't have the manpower anymore. So we're going to have to get a moving company, especially to move a whole building out. I would recommend that. that. That's hard to do internally. We did it last year, and I, like, them horses ain't here anymore. And we're talking, that's a seven-mile move. That's seven, it's hard to believe it, but that's seven miles over to APC. Had to start looking into moving companies at all? What did it cost? I got a moving company. I didn't check in. Well, we don't have your cost. approval to close the building yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, I mean, are we talking $40,000 to move a building? I mean, what? I mean, um, you're talking anywhere to move that building, I would say probably around 20000 There are some sunk costs here, no matter how you cut it. Well, I'm just curious. Right, yeah, no, that's a good question. Stuff, you right. usually have a figure. Right. That might we be moved it all over there this year. We had probably about 19 classroom moves, and it, it just occupied our whole summer. We didn't yeah. do, get no preventive maintenance done. But the nice thing about... And the guys who helped me, there, I mean... Brian and Phil, are, they're gone. Mm -hmm. They're going to be gone. The nice thing about moving into, um, we did actually give you a floor plan that was just a projection of, our thought was to use the old brick structure with a couple floors, and we would bring everything that's district-wide, just like other school districts that are fortunate enough to have an administration building. Everything that's administrative would be housed under one roof, which is nice for, for me and for whoever's going to be your future superintendent, believe me. The other end of the building that houses the gym and the library, I believe there's some very, very lucrative opportunities to lease that space so that you don't look at the criticism you're going to get for it just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, that back sections. Oh, that's one level. It's perfect. I mean, you could have some, maybe even a separate we, entrance. I, I'm, I'm, there's, there's local Ys in the area. You never know. I, I wouldn't want to sell it yet unless we got an offer we couldn't refuse. The only concern that I would have, because I, I, if you know I put in there, one of the options we have is put it up for sale. Then you lose it, and then you get an enrollment growth, and then you look really bad. So I, I, I think you have to look on what That'd be a long basically term. Amity Township has approval for their land development plans right now. There's a lot of housing developments that have already been approved by their planning commission mm -hmm. over there. So if this thing would ever break, I mean, I think we need to keep it in our you're, back pocket. You're talking, you're talking huge. You're going to be building another building. Not if we keep this, though. Not if we keep this. Well, it looks like you're going to utilize the cafeteria, take some of the things from there that are newer. Well, we'll use it. Use I mean, that's, well, there would be some restart-up costs. costs. I don't yeah, want to mislead anybody. If we would, costs. if we would have to recommission that building, there would be some startup costs, but they would be compared to building a twenty-seven, twenty-eight million dollar building, they'd be negligible. That's yeah, well, I thought it was a good idea to reuse the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because I just, like you said, you, I mean, I took a tour of it, and everything looked brand new. It is brand new. So. I think it's an idea that you couldn't even entertain right now to get even think about trying to sell the building, not to mention uh, if you would have to oh, that's quickly a good, that's move a good out building the offices to, sell. to bring in more students, mm -hmm. then we're going to be in the dilemma of finding where the administration offices are then going to be next. You move the administration in there, and you always have the option if we do get the growth and, you know, people start building the developments, the economy turns around, you still have the ability. Would it be possible to use that if you ever went forward with the cyber school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that looks like it could fit. There are a number of uses that you could earmark the building for. Um, I would want the district. I think there are some rules and regulations, and I'd have to talk to Brian Subers more. I, I think you have to be careful with the actual use of the building that you lease it for. It has to, I think, have an educational use because it is a school building. I don't think you can bring in like a like a car salesman or something like that. No, you can I sell cars in the back lot there. Right. Mm -hmm. All educational. No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying yeah, that. Yeah. Wasn't... No, I mean whoever. Be... I got news for you. Whoever right, wants so to sign a contract yeah. with us yeah. and pay us our price, yeah. they can have the space <laughs> as long as they're not ruining it, yeah. and it's not some some activity that we wouldn't want there. You don't want to save my adult daycare idea? I actually think that's a good idea. Let it's the a kids in the... It's not a bad idea. That's a great idea. Well, there's a market for it, but... It's a huge, it's a huge well, market. Huge. Center, that's mm -hmm. pretty well utilized over here. Yep. You know.
So I don't know what else other questions you might have. Um, I wanted to wait to float this out to the board, but I do want to put this on the agenda. Put if, that on there and bring it forth. I mean, I think we're. I mean, if you as a committee endorse it, that would help. I mean, if this is going to help, obviously, program. This is what we're we're all about. Well, to be honest with you, we were so close to it last year that it was it was almost like a coin toss. But I just didn't I didn't think we were ready yet in terms of of um, the, the numbers. I just felt felt that number was it was it was between. We're not between anymore. And to be honest with you, the number that we projected I think is high for the 15. That final number in the chart. Because our kindergarten numbers have not been coming in high. That 1570 could very well drop to 15, 1550, 1560. I don't think it's going to go. If it goes up, I'd be very surprised. If it goes over 1580, I'll buy everyone in this room lunch. But it's. Third day enrollment uh, figures has to be apples to apples. <laughs> To speak to Amity Intermediate Center, not one classroom is not of a regular classroom size. size. There's no one going mm -hmm. into a small group instruction room or a closet, including special education. Everyone will have a full-size classroom. We, and that's without even utilizing the large group instruction room that is also set up to be classrooms. That, that stays intact so that that can be utilized for what it would be. Well, a funny thing's happening in Daniel Boone. As fast as its population grew, it appears that that's how fast it's going backwards now. Recession will do that. Yes, it will. So, um, but other areas like, you know, where we're from, Exeter, Exeter's not seeing that. Wilson's not seeing that. Although Wilson did shut a building down. Yeah, well, they built. They well, that's true. They 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 we don't want to throw Wilson into this conversation. So. But, <laughs> but we, to make the point that I wanted to make, our enrollment is definitely, these numbers are accurate. Are, are they to the exact person? Maybe one or two off, but because now we have had move-ins and move-outs. But those are accurate from our three-day enrollment reports that go to the state, go to PDE. So uh, I did give you an additional... Uh, breakdown of each what each building would look like. So if you look day one next year, if our, everything holds equal, we'd have 650 kids in AIC, 502 in Monocacy, and 419. That's pretty good balance. That's a pretty good spread. And um, some of these positions that you see um, are by attrition. Uh, some of them aren't actually even layoffs. We just don't have to replace some people. So um, let me give you an example of what I'm going to do. John, John basically is um, he's going to hang up his mom. So I have a couple other people retiring at Birdsburg. So the other custodians basically at APC will just move into slots where the people are retiring. So. There could be some different configurations to the staff depending on what we want to do. Um, we've made a decision at this point to reduce an administrator rather than a counselor because we still have the same amount of kids and we believe that having that large number of kids, um, having just one, the one counselor would probably split some time between AIC and MEC since the, the, that's where the Amity population at APC went. So, but if there's feedback from the board, we can go another direction, but at this point, that's our recommendation to go that route. Who will uh, say the administrative offices are moved over there, over to, to APC? Who, who's in charge of uh, cleaning them? Okay. I'll bring Ron from us. Ron, we could just keep Ron. Just keep we were also yeah, thinking pretty, that... I mean, everybody basically upstairs. I mean, there's a lot of times that Ron's not around. I mean, everybody pitches in and cleans their own stuff up. We were thinking that if we... difference from... Right. If we went to yeah. a full administration building we would have a lot more traffic in terms of people just coming in and out on a daily basis to meet with people. And we were thinking about repurposing someone to become a receptionist at, at, <coughs> at the administration building. I have that covered, though, now. That's what I'm saying. So no new money. Right. We'll take what we have and make it work. So, um, but our, our, our plan is if you look at the floor plan, we would just, we wouldn't have to spend any money. We would just, I guess... Did you say from in terms of technology, they just have to run some wires? Well, we just have to change that. The um, it's really just changing software and stuff like that. Or the phone company over there. 
but um, we believe, to be honest with you, the the older part of the building, we think we're going to fill up rather quickly from an administration. See, what you don't realize in this district is technologies at the high school, Kenny's all over the place, all of the business office and central administration is there, special ed's farmed out somewhere. All of those, in, in, in a normal setting, all of those functions are under one roof. And we can bring them back. Our, our plan is to put all the psychologists over there so that Shelley has direct oversight of them on a daily basis. They have a home. That frees up office space that they don't need in each building then other than a little place to sit when they're testing kids and working with them. Right now, we have psychologist offices dedicated in, in every building, full-size classrooms in some cases. That's going to end. So that's how you free up space and use your space more wisely. So we, we think the plan's pretty tight. Um, we're ready to move on it. Um, we just need to. The other thing that has to happen, any staff that's affected from a legal standpoint, that's, they directly lose their job as a result of this closing, they have to be given 60 days notice as well. So we have to make sure we meet. We're right on the edge of the time. So if we do this now, we're in good shape. If we wait till March to move on this, we're going to lose another year. So bring it up for the committee as a whole. I, I, I plan to put this on the agenda for next Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, just one question, just you know, because I know we touched on it briefly here, but really would like Ken's opinion because it will come up whether you know if, whether it's feasible to leave APC at the or move out of here into APC and then leave this empty. That is a good where, question. Where, where that if there's any cost, oh, Ken, what well, you can weigh in on it now. On spot, but, yeah, that's good. It's eventually going to come up, you know, yeah. why, why you guys do this and. Yeah, so. I, I mean, can tell you, basically, my, if the building's empty right now, you're going to save forty-five thousand dollars in operational costs. We occupy that building; you're not going to save forty-five thousand dollars in operational. I think what he wants is the difference. What would the difference be? At least a projection. If, uh, what would you say? Eighty is there. For 65 is the. Uh, well, you got 80. Say 80 you got 86 sunk here on 80, four utilities. It's 86 thousand dollars and approximately 10 to 15 on utilities for this boardroom and the second and then floor. It, it wouldn't be feasible then to open that up. And, no. And, okay. I would like to do It'd that. It'd be good to just put that out. There, so I, yes. Unless you could get get, get out of the lease. Unless we yeah. could get out of the lease Thank partially yeah. at some point, maybe we could begin the transition in January. Of 2014, but um, we we just think all the way around this is a good plan. But even if we don't move into that building right away because of this lease, we could actually kind of start looking for people to rent the space. That doesn't in advance. Correct. That, 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 that can happen tomorrow. As soon as we close the building. But now they, close they the do building. use what they do use the gym for bands. Use the gym. Gary and I discussed that today. You know, we'll leave the gym open. Now is, is at forty five thousand. Do we have to turn the heat on anymore? We don't turn the heat on in the gym, but even though they're accessible to the halls. Yeah, so they're exposed. You're going to have all the other sections. Closed. We'll just set the time of days. You know what I mean? Just to keep the building. You have to keep it at a certain temp. You know what I mean? You can't just let it. You can't shut it down no. totally. It's like your house. Right. Freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're freeze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that, that's a big freezer. Yeah. It gets real cold in those in our caverns. Okay. But um, well, you might be able to fill that in, in a year. If you're looking at the space that's available, you might be able to occupy that with renters. And then when the lease here runs out, then you just move over and the yep. building's full. Or whatever you want to do. Uh, right now, there's a whole lot of lease space available. In this area, including, of course, it's, this it building. seems to be from, so, from what it's I'm going to be tough, but to you have to right. find somebody. It's going to be real tough. But the problem, no, but the, the market's going to be somebody that needs a school and wants a library and a gym and things like that. That's what's going to be our selling point. But Hopefully who knows? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, what it seems right now. Well, let us have to buy. Let us have to buy a small steamer. <laughs> but that's our plan. That's, to be honest with you, this is two years in the works. So. It really wasn't that hard to put this all together other than putting the details to it. I just, frankly, I was a little astounded by how much our enrollment really has started to dip. That, that to me, was the, the deciding factor. Because if I had looked at these numbers, I would have said, look, they haven't changed, but they've changed. So theoretically, if Committee of the Whole 
Uh, we discussed this. Could we go out to vote? I don't know. that. I think all you need to do is say that we're going to – I'll have to talk to Brian about what the so actual what the steps stage. are. But I think – not that it's a vote. You would just say let's move forward with this and let's announce – because I think it's it's a hearing, and then after that hearing period is over, that's right. when you officially vote. You don't vote to have the meeting. I think you schedule the meeting and so say we're posting three months. You have to have a ninety. In other words, what it is is it's a time for people to comment. Mm -hmm. The rules give people time to comment because this is a big move, so it gives them a, a very very liberal opportunity to respond. And the ninety days is that one hearing. Or yes, it's have, just then you have you you would have because um, obviously they're going to come to committee the whole and, and board they meetings. Could come, they could bring it up at each. Yes, meeting. you could bring it up at each meeting. Right. Executively for yes. those three months. For those three months. As an old business. As under old business. Okay. But I'll have um, a little bit more uh, specific detail on the legal process. Actually, Brian Subers was in the process of writing up um, a summary letter to deal with any legal issues because we have to one of the things that we had to make sure was that there wasn't any issue with the co-stars contract that we had pact agreement so there's i'm sorry the pact agreement so apparently as we understand it there's no issue there there's no issue with bond reimbursement money so we're not going to lose money as a result of closing it down um there's no other legal issue beyond those two things because we own the building um so we're, we're, we're good to go. There's really nothing standing in our way other than serious public outcry, and I don't, I don't even think we'll get that. That's just me being um, honest about. I think and how we present it in terms of how it meshes with our budgetary needs, I think is going to be a significant way to sell the idea as well. It's more of an adjustment than a closing. And I don't I think they'll be it. upset if they know that they're going to have kindergarten, period. So, if you can say this pays for kindergarten, mm -hmm. yeah. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You're right, and it pays for That's why we're there. It pays for many things in the future. And they stay with their peers. They stay. They do stay with their kindergarten peers um, because they'll be moving as a whole, and then they'll be coming. Well, they'll back. split though. Some of them will go to Monocacy first grade, and some of them then will go to AIC first right, grade. Right, but for the most part, anyone uh, they're. They're, they'll be returning back as a whole. So the kindergarten group that Correct. comes as a kindergarten group will come back as a first grade Correct. group. Correct. And we can intermix them with the Monocacy students. That's not a problem. Yeah, I don't see that as a bad thing, personally. Don't, Some people might. You know, remain with their same peer group anyway. Sometimes kids are will be placed in a classroom and, and I'll get phone calls saying, my child's with no one they've ever been with before. But to be honest Please. with you, it, it takes the major investment that we made at mm -hmm. Monocacy and we're actually using that more efficiently now as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's not forget that. That's kind of a side conversation here. And that won't impact her lunches. So but kindergarten going there will not be. Her, her absorption of the kindergarten is almost like it's less than a little mosquito in your hand. I mean, it's, it's really, it's not a problem. And that, and that knock on wood, obviously that building's in tip top shape. So let's use it. I think probably the only, the only backlash we'll get will be probably why APC was was renovated. Um, so I think you dismiss that the first time it comes up, and, and then you don't hear it again. So I, I'm prepared to deal with it. I mean, I, I can honestly say the decisions were made before I got here, but that that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter when I was Much here. Of what's happened though is is over the. The last five years that I've been there, I've been losing classrooms due to needing to furlough a teacher from one class size or another. So that has opened up the space. Um, and that has that has that impacted the decision. Um, that's been that's I mean, been that, that is pretty significant. And the fact that I went from nine fifth grade classes to seven and then to six, you know, so as those class sizes were decreasing. No, that's um I don't know what else to say. I think we're... I've, I've seen it all here. I've seen trailers sitting outside of school buildings, shoveling kids in trailers, and now, yep. now this. basically this. Full circle. Um, trailers work bad. My son was in that. I can <laughs> store them. Yeah. But I, I, again, I, I know they from... Nightmare. from I, I can remember my, my, my six years in North Penn, they went through a major redistricting one year and moved kids from one day, and they had 12, 13 elementaries, but they... 
the minute you moved a kid out of an elementary building to another one, that was like World War III. And then we had space problems there with art on a cart, and parents were complaining about that. And we're, we don't have any of those emotional issues that come up with this plan. They're just not there. I, I do believe we have health on a cart in eighth grade. Ooh. I bet you might. We I do. We, the, my son I does in eighth grade. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. And they got to turn all the books in, so they yeah. only one set. If that's the worst that we have to worry about, we're in good yeah. shape. The health class, mm -hmm. yeah. that state requirement. So if you don't have any more questions, I no. think we've we've kind of. Anyone? I, no, I thank you for bringing this. Yeah, up. I think I it's think, a uh, well well planned. Uh, looking at all the where well, you have everyone situated, that was very helpful. Well, we knew that, and and that we did that as much for the public when we released this to say, I can see. I, I honestly, I think if there's if there's a huge outcry, we'll offer to have a public forum. One night, come over to APC. We'll walk the floor. It's a shame. Or come over to AIC. We'll walk yeah, the floor. The paper could have been here to get get some information out. And, well, I'll and call Stephanie and tell her to listen to the tape that we okay. we're going to post. That'd be great. Just tell her to come down and meet us, and we'll go over one day, go over everything, so we can put it in. The well, I don't want to do that until the whole board sees it, though. I apologize for the handwriting. If I could take those charts and use it in a word document for somebody, I would have. But no, it only looks That's like fine. looks like you worked harder on them that my way. My elementary That's writing, my writing. <laughs> I, just, I understood it. I'm just actually I didn't. I always knew AIC was a big building, mm -hmm. but until I saw, it, I was like, my word. You don't realize until you walk down, and then of course the special education's on the left when you, can, when you go in there on the, and then of course when you get down the stairs. Well, that uh, tower of rooms there, those four and four that are right there. That's such a good use of space. I mean, that is really a well, I think well engineered. Pretty, in, pretty well integrated throughout the building. Now. Is that is that where it's in <coughs> special education you see a lar large grouping more than say the high school? Uh, as far as number of classes, no. You, at the high school, they're more um, next to other classrooms because they're learning support. That's probably supporting ninth grade, tenth grade, whatever subject area. They're they're probably more interspersed. Um, at, at AIC, I, I made sure that we had a <coughs> support classroom on each level and where the, the basic need was. Third grade had a larger influx, so I tried to make sure that there was a classroom closer to third grade so that they didn't have to walk as far. Um, but we had moved some classes around a little bit at AIC at the start of this school year. I try to minimize as much moving for Kenny and his guys. So if a teacher was you know, becoming a special ed teacher that was currently a third grade classroom, then that third grade classroom now became her special ed classroom um, because there wasn't really a need for that space. I mean, so. we'll say, I mean, just another thing that we'll save all that classroom furniture, mm -hmm. we'll put that in storage. If we ever need to reopen the building, we have everything. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, yeah, this cool. doesn't cost us a whole lot to re repurpose if we need to, if we get 400 kids in the next 10 years that we, we didn't, have, we didn't expect areas to store for that. Oh, uh, we'll start in that building somewhere. Between the two buildings. Between the two and, buildings. And to be honest with you, if we need to reevaluate this six, seven years from now, it may be up to the superintendent then to maybe you're going to reconfigure. Maybe you'll go K, K to 6. Maybe you'll go some other configuration where you can move your whole district around. Now, that's a bigger move. But I, I'm telling you, that you, this is a great insurance policy for a long-term financial stability in terms of not having to go out and float new debt. Okay. okay. Agreement with the, uh, the committee. So we'll All right. take it yeah. forward. We'll be on the agenda for next Monday. Yeah. Thank you. We want to announce officially. Uh, officially uh, closed. Meeting adjourned. 654.